All right, look back to Maya. Uh, let's see, today I am just going to be giving some tips for the final exam. The I'm not going to be doing any modeling demo today uh, for the exam. I'm just going to be giving you some like tips on how to like uh, speed up your process a bit so that you can get it done in a timely manner. Because by now you should be able to um, model this on your own without much help from like a demo video like this because you've done a lot of it already. So the you can see the pieces I have here of one of the trailers. There's this part, which is the box, which is basically identical to part of the treasure chest we did in the midterm. And then like the wheels are just like cylinders with some scaling along different edge loops. And the covers on the wheels are also very simple, just I took a cube and just extruded the edges out. The body of it also just like took a cube, made it a rectangle shape that's like kind of flat, made this tapered point to it, did some extrusions and cuts along the edges to get this sort of indented shape on the bottom in these little wedges on the sides and this sunken in part that this thing is going to go into and the front hitch as well as I have a little tiny back hitch back here that I'm gonna move on to it. The undercarriage I just took a cylinder and did some extrusions along like the middle to make it thicker there and made these bars to look a little bit like the undercarriage of a car. You only have a about 2300 tries triangles that you can fit into this scene. Let me see. Yeah, 18 to, 1800 to 2300 triangle count for the range of all the meshes in your trailer. So right now everything I've selected here is about 2044. So I could go a little bit higher with the detail that I, if I wanted. In fact, I even have a slightly alternate version of the trailer here that's already assembled with some different details on it that reaches uh, 2,238 triangles, which is like almost barely pushing the limit. So maybe yours might end up looking a little bit more similar to this because you want to have more detail or something. There are a bunch of different trailers in the images reference folder that you can find on Moodle. I modeled mine mostly after this one here, but like say if you wanted to model yours after uh, this one, it might look a little bit more similar to this instead. But I like this one a lot because you can see pretty much all of it all at once in a decent amount of detail. I didn't ever bother putting the image into the scene because it's just in perspective and it's not really going to help me at all if it's not like in a perfect orthographic view. And this doesn't have to be like an exact project either because it's supposed to be not super high detail. So let's look back at this, these pieces here. The reason I have these all separated out is because I actually really recommend that you mod model all the different pieces of your trailer. Uh, separately so that you can UV map them like where you can see all their edges and sides and everything before you actually put it all together. Um, I have all my stuff UV mapped already and then once you have it all UV mapped you would take it to uh, where it should be. So I'm gonna make a cut down the middle of this thing so that I can line everything up along the center. This one I have the pivot point in the middle. I'm just I already have it at the right height of course because that's about how high I wanted it to be. And this wheel here. Um these ones are not flipped. Actually I gotta flip this around. And I want to move the pivot point to here using the vertex snap by holding V. 
and I'm just going to snap it to the end of Thunder Carriage there. You can probably see what I'm going to be doing uh, for the rest of this part <laughs> at this point. Um, let's see. Can I get this to be like exactly centered? I might have to make a cut down the middle so that I can do that. Yeah, I need to do that. So I can get my pivot point in the right spot. This thing, I just want the pivot point to be in the middle so I can stick it on the butt. And I actually want it to be like partially in there because that's kind of how it's shaped in the actual thing. This one, I want the pivot point to be flush with the body of the truck. Or the trailer, sorry. And actually, I want to change the shape of it just a tiny bit. Let me do that real quick. Yeah, just so it's not like overlapping with the body. And I'm actually going to just delete that and then do a mirror across the x axis. Yeah, that works. You can also do that for your tires, but if you do that, then you'll have to be mindful of how you lay out your UVs. Because if you have things stacked on top of each other and you want to do the kind of texturing that I'm planning to do, which I'm just going to texture this really fast in substance because I know how to use it um, quickly. And that's my plan after I'm done just assembling this. Oh dear. Yeah, there we go. Now everything's perfect. Okay, and I'm just gonna real quick just do like a regular layout of everything. Because I'm not as super concerned with having everything be perfect. And I mean, you know how to do like the checkerboard um, render thing that is just the same as the treasure chest part. But now I am going to save this as a new scene. And I'm just going to select all these and export it as an FBX. Uh, that's the wrong folder. Trailer. I don't have any other things in the trailer in there. I already have substance open, so I'm just going to start a new file, new project. I'm going to do 1024 because I have all my things just on one thing. Uh, I need my FEX file. Where am I? Mine is Mr. 3 because that's the semester I took this class in. Um... I'm not doing UDIMS, so I can turn that off. So I might recommend that you actually texture your trailer in substance if in the final if you have time just because well if you can assign all the textures fast enough it will make it look a little bit nicer in the end so first things first texture set settings bake mesh maps and use full poly mesh side poly mesh make the output size the same as what we're doing turn off id don't need it and we can just bake it right away. I'm just going to be using some smart materials to texture this thing. Oh, what? Why does it look bizarre? Okay, well, it's fine over here. I don't know why it looked different in the oven than it normally does. I, I like to call that thing the oven because you're baking, even though it's definitely not an oven. Um, nice thing about how I set it up into different pieces though is that the 
way that it will apply the materials is a bit different. So, or no, not the materials. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of how you do, uh, what's it called? Did I just crash my thing? Woohoo, Adobe. I love Adobe. This didn't happen before, but now it does. Okay, here we go. I want to make the dirt map be uh, less of a thing. <laughs> Can I do that? Is it possible? Well, it's not tiling. This is it. Whoa. Interesting. I can change the roughness of the dirt. Uh, I just want to change like the oh here it's this part I have to click right yeah the the mask part ooh interesting. That one has some edge detection stuff on it. I'm just messing around a little bit with this thing. I don't know why it's taking so long to load the thing I clicked. I just wanted to decrease the amount of dirt on here because I don't want to have an extremely dirty thing. Just a little bit dirty. I also want to change the color of the paint to yellow because I like yellow. Looks a little bit like a construction thing now, but it looks even more dirty. So I'm gonna... Make the... Dirtiness a little less dirty. <laughs> make the dirtiness less dirty. Yeah, good, good speaking, Susanna. Well, here we go. Now I can just make a mask. And I'm going to do my wrong button that I click. Oops. Oh. Oh. I'm awkward. Well, it's not the worst thing that one could do. I think it's doing it like that because everything is like flush up against each other. Actually, I like how it looks on these parts. So I'm going to keep that. Ooh, this is okay. This is okay. It's not what I was imagining, but it's okay. It's okay. What does it look like in the picture again? This part is the same texture, so I actually want that to be the same. Um, Alright, I'm going to do a different one now. This one's just going to be rough steel. It's not going to be painted. This, I like how it looks already, so I'm just going to add a black mask. And I am... Can I do that? No, that doesn't work. I'm just going to go and like... Yeah, that works. Oh, that's the dryer. Sorry if that scared you. And I want to put it on these parts too. Pinocchio, I want a real... <laughs> I want a real boy. I don't want to be a real boy, I just want a boy. Just in my possession. That's how the story goes, right? Uh, 
I missed that part on the bottom. There we go. Is that everything? Oh, right. I want to apply it to this box here as well. Because it looks kind of similar in the thing. And now, that's most of it. I'm going to do one more texture. Actually, I'm going to do two more. I'm going to do this for the undercarriage. And like this part of the tire. Yeah, the interior. The exterior is going to be, ooh, rubber. Ooh, ooh. That's not good. There we go. Icky. Oops, I've been making boxes. Unconstitutional, even. Because if you do a marquee select, it'll select everything behind it. Yeah, there we go. Uh, that's that layer. It's not going to look perfect, but it's fine. Okay, let's do one more. Where's rubber? Yeah, rubber tire. That's going to be your rubber tire dirty, because the rest of it's all dirty, too. It's so dirty. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, I have to get these interior sides. Yep, there we go. Honestly, I kind of prefer texturing this way rather than just like selecting all the faces and assigning colors to them in Maya. Like, because you're going to have to do the UV map anyway. And if you know how to do substance texturing like really quick, like I just did in what did that take like 10 minutes? Then you have plenty of time to do it during the exam when you have three hours to do the whole thing. Or I suppose it's like two hours and 40 minutes or closer to that or whatever. Um, I have some Z fighting here, which is no good. Um, if you see that, that's called Z fighting. Um, it means that two surfaces of the same thing are on top of each other. So I'm just going to move that one up a little bit. It'll be fine. It won't distort the textures that much when I actually re-import it back to the model. Um, okay. I like how... Actually, I'm going to do... Um, is it this one? Yeah. For the mask, I want it to actually be applied to this thing as well. This box here. All right, and I'm going to export my textures now. I want to make a new folder while I'm doing this, though. Uh, trailer TX. I use set my output directory to be there. Where is it? Exam preview. Yeah, there we go. Arnold the eye standard. Uh, we're doing it the same size. Okay. Awesome. Okay, it's done. And everything is just going to apply the same material. AI standard surface. Also, I need to delete type, type history. <laughs> Make sure you do that. That's part of the exam. Uh, to delete the type history of your things. All right, I'm going to name this trailer DX. That's also another thing about the exam. Uh, make sure you name like your texture and like the all your model things here in that outliner. Um, 
I'm not going to do it all right now, just because it would take a while. Um, but that's something that you will want to do. All right, file. All right, you know how this process goes. Oh no, am I going to have to find the folder every time? This is going to suck if I do. Base color. RGB, yep, that's good. Littleness. File. I want to get the image. <laughs> it's in the, yeah, we're redirected to the a folder of the other project I've been working on for the past couple days. I'm doing something for Art Fight for my girlfriend. I'm making a character in Maya. I can show after this is done if anyone wants to see it. Or in that. I can talk about it while I'm reading these files. Did I do Alpha's Luminance for Melodus? I did. Okay. Geometry, I want normal map. Edge of space normals. What value? CG225, exam preview, trailer TX, normal. The reason it. I don't know why it actually has the weird name that it does. Utility raw, all those elements are starting to turn down. Okay. Let's do the quickest thing you've ever seen. Set the sample. Uh, volume sample is already set to two. I want that set to two. Create lights, directional light. Set the intensity to, I don't know, two. Make a big disc for this thing to sit on. That's what I like to do. And let's just do a quick Arnold preview render to see if it looks okay. I should have saved before pressing that. Oh, okay, it turned out okay. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. And then you just do a render of that real quick and you'd be done with the exam as well as the checkerboard render, actually. I didn't do that part, but you'll have to do that part. You know how to do it already. I'm not going to show you how to do it. I just wanted to show off the little textures that I was able to apply in like 15 minutes. <laughs> if you do have like an extra 15 minutes or something at the end of the exam and you're confident that you can be as quick as me, then I suppose you can do that. All right. I will end that part right there. Switch back to the viewport render. Um, if you have any more questions, then just send me a message on Teams, obviously. And I'm going to open that other scene that I've been working on earlier. Um, you know, just for fun. Uh, yeah, I would like to save changes, actually. Yeah, this is what I've been doing lately. Um, making a little character model that I'm going to put clothes and stuff on. But, yeah, if you want to see this, then there it is. <laughs> um, this might be, like, the last video that I actually make for this class. That's my email. Um, if you want to find me online, you can go to my art Tumblr, which is called uh, that, which I can post in the video description, or I can link it there. It looks like images are loading, yeah. You can see like I have all my other art here, art projects and drawings from other classes that you are probably taking at the same time. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything more to say about the exam other than that you should model all your pieces individually, then put them together after you map them to make the 
um, UV mapping and texturing process easier and like seeing just how simple it honestly can be if you do it that way. Like, let me go back to this. Um, like, a lot of these were just like cubes with a few extrusions. Like, it's really not that complicated when you actually break it down. So just think about breaking this thing down to different parts, like the trailer part with the hinges, this little cover, the wheel, the undercarriage, that box, this cover thing, and then this box, and the platform that they all go on. And maybe if you have extra triangles, then you can put this cover on the top where you can add this weird lever thing here, but you probably won't because just making all those things in the wheel because the wheel takes up so many triangles, oh my goodness. It's like, if I were to go here, like that, if I were to delete these two wheels, that's literally half the entire poly count. <laughs> I like, oh my goodness. Maybe you make the wheels first so that you can see how many uh, polys you have to work with for the rest of it. That's probably something I would do. And... Yeah, I think that's the end of the tips that I have for this. Alright, good luck on the final exam. Let me know if you need help.